Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, DAOs, promise to scale even further our ability to organize in order to achieve our goals and do so transparently uh, in an accountable manner in a flat participative structure that doesn't depend on the infallibility of anyone at the top. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. The concept of the DAO, Decentralized Anonymous Organization, was born a few years ago on top of the Ethereum blockchain. When uh, its developers wanted to make available a new way to invest in projects where the investors would not only passively make their funds available, but through a voting mechanism could decide which were the projects that uh, deserved to receive the funds. The DAO, as it was called, was not successful because the code on which it was based was defective. It has bugs. And uh, that was an important signal to the entire community uh, who uh, trusted the uh, ability of programmers to come up with uh, a solid structure. Attention, because money is involved here and lots of money can be lost due to some programming defects in the code. Well, since then, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, as a matter of fact, billions of dollars have been lost uh, in various blockchain projects uh, due to bugs in the code. But the enthusiasm towards decentralized autonomous organizations hasn't vanished. Uh, it is part now of the thinking around what Web3 should be. Uh, one of the important components uh, as uh, uh, one of the uh, recipients uh, of my newsletter uh, pointed out uh, because when I spoke about Web3 I didn't mention DAOs. The DAO um, is not only for coordinating and uh, letting uh, investors participate in funds to be deployed towards projects. There are many other use cases that uh, can benefit from this kind of new organization. Traditionally, uh, we would tend to delegate decision-making uh, to a single individual or a very small group of individuals. Uh, whether in uh, uh, an economic kind of organization, a corporation, where the CEO, the chief executive officer, would be in charge of making the ultimate uh, decisions, and then he or she, most likely he, historically speaking, would delegate uh, these decisions or some of these decisions to vice presidents and uh, general managers, and all kinds of uh, executives, uh, with everyone else uh, obeying and then doing their own thing, but without being involved in the decision-making itself. On the other hand, uh, we would also have the same type of organization uh, for society at large, uh, with uh, a king or a president uh, or a prime minister making decisions. Uh, and once again, everyone in a hierarchical order uh, with some degree of delegation uh, from the top 
uh, and uh, in representative democracies, um, a very large degree of delegation from the bottom, uh, where uh, the people go to vote, and then every four years uh, they vote again. But in the meantime, there is a professional political class that makes uh, the uh, legislative decisions, and in the executive branch, of course, the uh, government makes the executive decisions. Now, one would think uh, that uh, this type of structure is uh, necessary, or maybe even optimal. Well, it would appear very efficient uh, in uh, uh, surface, and that may be so in the short term. However, uh, the danger is very clear. Um, a, a visible accumulation of power, uh, where the decisions by the head of a corporation or the head of a government influence everyone else. And the degree of accountability and the ability to adapt and learn uh, is very limited. Hierarchical organizations can efficiently make fatal mistakes. Or even if their mistakes are not fatal, they can go uh, in uh, directions that then need to be uh, corrected with great effort uh, and the great loss of uh, value uh, that is unable to accrue to the organization itself. So, one of the assumptions around decentralized autonomous organizations is that these are going to be maybe less efficient because of the need by each of the participating nodes to uh, decide relatively independently um, what is the right course of action, but that through the wisdom of the crowd, and the ability to more frequently participate and learn and correct the mistakes, uh, these organizations are going to be more adaptable and uh, better able to course correct. In times of rapid changes, this could be a very desirable feature. Now, whether a decentralized autonomous organization is uh, able to coordinate the collective action of a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, or a million people. And the largest corporations today are about a million people, maybe two million, uh, but uh, none of them are, are larger. Or uh, whether uh, it is uh, a organized uh, uh, in order to uh, actually uh, aim to represent an alternative, not to a corporation, but uh, to the tra traditional uh, system of uh, representative democracy, uh, even when what we would look at are tens or hundreds of millions of people, or maybe even billions of people, where the largest uh, democracy today on earth uh, which is India, has about 1.5 billion people. Well, these are each powered by humans. And one of the challenges of DAOs is to make sure that human attention and human participation is sustained. It is hard work. It is massive work. It requires a lot of effort. You could think uh, of a DAO powered by humans as a proof-of-work consensus algorithm. Because, well, our brains are expensive. They use a lot of energy and a lot of thinking brains are needed in order to form the decisions of the DAOs. Another DAO, another type of DAO, is that of made of software and hardware machines to an increasing degree. 
where the decisions of the decentralized autonomous organization are not made by humans, but are made by machines. And this can be interesting in, in many different ways. The simplest example uh, is a transportation network. Sooner or later, uh, there are those who think within the next uh, three to five years, we will have the ability to deploy uh, cars that do not need drivers. And this will ignite innovation around how a transportation network should uh, be organized. So one of the ways that a new kind of autonomous transportation network could be organized is exactly a DAO, where the various cars participating each decide together with uh, all of the others which is the one that should make the next delivery or which is the one that should go and pick up uh, the human uh, uh, calling them, uh, optimizing uh, the occupancy rate, uh, the energy consumption, recharging the electric cars, because of course these are going to be electric, uh, when uh, one of them should go and be uh, serviced for some defect that its own sensors are able to detect, and so on and so forth. It will be absolutely natural for the machines not to appoint a machine CEO. And both human and machine DAOs, of course, will need to be uh, self-reflective. They need to be introspective. They need to be able to evaluate whether the rules under which uh, their decisions are made and coordinated are fit for the purpose. And as it will be frequently the case, when they are not fit for the purpose, how they can be evolved and improved. There will need to be a meta layer of participation, a meta layer of design and voting and adoption of new kinds of rules. And those DAOs that are going to be able to implement this type of self-reflection and introspection uh, in order to improve their own workings, well, are going to be the ones that will design whatever will come for 10 million humans to coordinate their activities and for, well, yes, trillions of machines uh, to participate in rich ecosystems of value creation.